Hi, welcome to the Armed Guardian Podcast. I'm your host, Brian. Today, we're with Robin Sandoval from A Girl on a Gun. She's going to talk to us about uh, the Girl on a Gun program, tell us what it is, and uh, how it can help you as a lady uh, to become a better shooter, better, you know, make connections, and uh, all things involved with Girl on a Gun. How are you doing today, Robin? Hi, Brian. Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. Okay, so uh, for people that may not know who Robin Sandoval is, can you give us a brief intro or bio to Robin Sandoval? <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, I am the president and CEO of A Girl and a Gun. Mm -hmm. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. Um, I, am, I dedicate my life to teaching women and families the safe and proficient use of firearms. I do a lot of advocacy in the Second Amendment field, but I wasn't always that way. I was a strong anti-gunner for most of my life. And uh, when I became a gun owner, I, I, it opened a world that I never knew existed. And so now I'm fortunate to accompany a lot of women and families in their journey to learn about firearms, to learn about the opportunities for training, to learn about all the fun that we have on the range and all the activities that we have. And so that's, that's what I do in my life in a nutshell. I'm an instructor. I'm certified by a number of academies. I train regularly. I host a lot of trainings. I teach a lot. Um, I really have the best job in the world is really what it comes down to. <laughs> that's great. That That's awesome. And it's, uh, it's interesting that you mentioned, uh, uh, for those that may not know about yourself and you know your background, that you were that anti-gun and that you've become more, um, you know, you've become pro-gun now and that you've had that uh, change of, of heart. I guess it is that, you know, that thoughts and it's uh, interesting to see people that, you know, turn over a new leaf and, you know, see things from a different perspective and then they become attached to it and, you know, become a proponent for, for what they were against avidly in the past. So uh, great bio, great uh, introduction. And uh, we'll go off. Uh, first question we had is uh, what is the girl in a gun program? So actually that's kind of a, a too brief of an of a outline so not only do we introduce new shooters to shooting but we give advanced shooters opportunities that that uh, keep them in the game, honing their skills. And that really is what makes a girl in the gun unique is that we focus on all life cycles of the, sh the shooter, the entire journey. We do defense, competition, uh, pretty much if you think it, we do it. We do all platforms, um, all types of shooting, uh, recreational, educational, um, lots of different events. So we have on the local level, we have chapters that are running our events. Uh, and then I am fortunate to get to host Girls Night Outs, girls, our girls getaways, destination events. So ladies come with me and we go and do some really amazing things. So last week, for example, I was in Virginia hosting our vehicle CQB course. I had 40 ladies out there with me at the Virginia International Raceway. We were doing all things moving, shooting around vehicles, through vehicles, uh, learning how to protect yourself in the parking lot, parking garages, any of those transitional spaces that involve vehicles. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a lot of shooting in and around the car. And then we're also... Um, addressing some non-lethal options that are helpful in a parking lot, uh, right. like pepper spray and situational awareness, verbal de-escalation. And then we, of course, went on the racetrack and learned evasive driving, rollover recovery, off-road recovery, uh, drifting, skid maneuvers, and that kind of stuff too. So wow. those are the fun things that I get to do. Um, I, I thought, you know, I want to learn this stuff and maybe other women do too. So I put it together and we just hosted our third Drift Academy, uh, Drift. It's a play on words because we are drifting on the skid pad, but it also stands for dynamic real world immersive firearms training. So it's an acronym for all of the all of the vehicle CQB that we that we do. So we host that event twice a year. We also host a Glock Armors course twice a year where I take a group of girls to Glock, uh, the Glock Professional HQ in Smyrna, Georgia. And uh, the Glock instructors roll out the red carpet for our girls. And uh, I'm really proud that we've certified more than 200 armors in the past couple of years. Um, back in the day when I first was curious about running an armors course, I just didn't see a lot of women doing it. I saw mostly guys were the tinkerers and doing repairs and gunsmithing. And so I thought, well, what if women had the opportunity? So um, our friends at Glock 
like I said, they roll out the red carpet for us. So we've gone for many years out to Glock. So we do that twice a year. Um, we also host a sniper school for ladies that want to learn how to shoot over a mile and a half away and wear concealment and ghillie suits and understand the concepts of concealment and, um, you know, those kinds of uh, ballistics and math. <laughs> if you if that interests you, yeah. uh, we just make it fun and approachable. So we have a lot of different events. Of course, um, we have the only all ladies three gun match in the nation, which is our fall fest. Uh, that is, uh, it's actually comprises three separate events all rolled into one. So we have three gun university for ladies who want to learn the sport of three gun. They may have competed in other sports like IDPA, USPSA, or, you know, ASI or any of the others, but they maybe don't have the experience with three gun or they will just want to hone their three gun skills and, and run the game better. So we have three gun university for three days prior to the event. And then we have a one day team pistol challenge, which is so fun. If you've never shot a team pistol match, it's a two girl team, two woman team, and you wear costumes and it's silly. And, you know, you shoot the red ones, she shoots the blue ones, or you tag team, or sometimes you're tethered and it's yeah. six stages of just lots of fun. And um, so we always have really fun names and, and costumes like we have Wilma and Betty and Thelma and Louise and you know all these really fun names it's a lot of fun and then we of course have our three-day three-gun match which our two-day three-gun match which is all natural terrain so uh, we're really fortunate that uh, Mr. Lucas owns Lucas Oil and he has his private ranch where he has retired to and it has a guest lodge and um, uh, some berms and so he lets us he welcomes us to his home basically and so we're really fortunate um, we have the best supporters in the industry. We have great relationships with our sponsors. And so we're able to do really incredible things. And um, I'm, like I said before, I, I have the best job in the world. And so for women who on the local level just want to learn some basic marksmanship, we got you. For ladies who um, want to learn some advanced marksmanship, we got you. And then for those who want to just get out their comfort zone and come meet other women and travel and, and learn new skills and dive into something totally different, um, it's a really great way for them to come and, and know that you're going to meet friends. You're, you're not going to be, you know, if you come with a girlfriend, that's great. But if you just come alone, you're going to leave with 40 new girlfriends or 700 new girlfriends if you come to conference. So um, it's, we do a lot of things to make sure that we nurture those relationships so that everyone feels welcome. And it's a really safe place to kind of just jump into, even if you don't know anybody. So we have a lot of really fun opportunities like that. Okay. Yeah, you, you froze up for about the first minute uh, with the uh, intro into it, but but it, I, I think we 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 got every, uh, the gist of what a, the overall program is, and I like the the program because it it does focus or does cater to women, and that's the majority of the new gun owners out there, and uh, a lot of women they may not like to take a a coed class because of their fear of not knowing a lot about guns or you know, just being brand new and afraid that they'll be uh, in the class with someone that's got a little bit more knowledge experience. And, uh, I, I really applaud the, especially in the, some of the competition that you, you do with the three gun and, and stuff like that, that it encourages women to be comfortable in, you know, uh, atmosphere of other like-minded women. And, you know, it does foster those, uh, friendships and and lifelong uh, skills that uh you know you, you learn that you need being a firearms owner concealed carrier so yeah there's a lot of great training out there that um is available to women if you know where to look for it but a lot of times just the intimidation factor of walking into that gun range or walking into that gun store can be really frightening for someone to feel it like they're going in a place where they don't belong so just by having a girl in the gun banner on the wall, you know that you're welcome. You know that there's people who will understand you, that they'll speak your language. They're not going to talk down to you, that they really want the best for you and can give you those opportunities. And uh, at a girl in the gun, I'm really fortunate. Not only do we have great sponsors, but just within our organization, we have really talented instructors. So to be a facilitator, to run a chapter, to be part of our organization, you have to have a compilation of credentials. So all of our instructors are incredibly skilled. Um, they have a professional resume that's incredibly long. Um, they, they've really put in the time and their training, and we require that of them. All of our instructors have passed the FBI qual at 90%, which is what uh, Plain Coast Federal Officer has to pass it at. So we have very high standards. They have to call on that annually uh, every other year. So 
we know that our girls can walk the walk. We know that they can talk the talk. They are good shooters. They are good communicators. So it's a really great place to go and make sure that you're learning from someone who's credentialed, that you're learning from someone who can speak your language uh, and you're welcome. There's a community there to support you, um, that they have the knowledge and depth of understanding and that they're teaching you the right way. So all of those things are, are values that we have that we hit on regularly. Uh, we have a cadre of instructors that is 300 instructors, all females, all highly credentialed. Um, we're really paving the way for women in this industry. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. Uh, next question. Uh, I noticed on your website, whenever I was going through trying to gather up questions and everything, uh, what are the goals of the the program? Uh, I, the, the four pillars I saw on the, on the website, what's, what's those? Yeah. So our pillars are education, recreation, competition, and community. So everything we do, we try to incorporate those aspects into our events. So whether you just want to come hang out with the girls and get out of the house and do something different, whether you want to be educated on the firearm, whether you want to do competition or you're just shooting for fun, we, we really try to incorporate all of those values. So if you're a defender, a competitor, or just want to come hang out, a girl in the gun is for you. Okay. All right. That sounds good. What are some of the uh, events you have? I know we kind of briefly talked about the drift academy and and things like that uh but uh are there any others uh that uh that either that you're currently doing or that you're maybe looking to add on in the future or anything with your your events yes yeah, so our biggest event of the year is our national conference mm -hmm. uh, that we have 700 students 150 staff with sponsors and everyone on site we have about a thousand people there all dedicated to training so it's really fantastic and uh, that is held every year in, in, um, in April in Colorado. And then coming up next month, we're hosting our Clays Extravaganza. So that's all shotguns. So for all of our girls who are NSCA um, and registered, it is a registered shoot. So you can get punches uh, towards your rankings in NSCA. And so if you don't know shotgun sports, you don't know um, trap or uh, we're not doing trap this time because it's not an in a NSCA event, but we are doing sporting clay, super sporting and five stand. So if you're not familiar with the, those, the rules of those sports, or if you just want some good shotgun training, mm -hmm. we always try to incorporate clinics into everything we do. So just like learning the sport of three gun, we have three gun university okay. before our clays extravaganza, we have a day of clinics. So mm -hmm. ladies can come and get training from, um, NSCA instructors and, uh, learn some shotgun skills and help them break those clays. So everything we do is to set people up for success. We really want to build confidence and build people up. Okay. All right. That's great. And, and another thing with the, the shooting events that you do you now, it, it is a little bit of a competition, but it's no, you don't have to become a seasoned competitive shooter to become a member, to participate. Uh, and I tell people at our local gun club that I'm a, a member of, because I do some of the events that you no. Know, we don't care you know, if it's your first shoot uh, or you know, you're just interested in learning the different defensive pistol, bullseye pistol, come out, have fun. That's, that's what we want to do. And our, our club, our club motto for our club is pass it on talking about passing it on to the future generations. And I, mm -hmm. I, I really push the, uh, you know, trying expanding your, your knowledge, your, you know, try something new that you haven't shot before, whether, you know, you, you're just typically shooting pistol or maybe you're into just a rifle, try, try the opposite a, a little bit. And, uh, but yeah, you don't have to be a seasoned competitive shooter, do you? No, not at all. We have, uh, we have a lot of different opportunities for people to learn competition. Competition is great for defensive skills too, because it gives you a baseline. And when you see what fast is now, you can know, how you want to push yourself, how you want to, uh, you know, reduce your split times and how you want to get on target faster. And, you know, all of those things that you want to do defensively, but you can really learn and hone them through competition. So they really do marry well. Um, it is a game. So it's a sport. It's fun. Uh, gamers are going to game, but it's still at the end of the day, a lot of those skills cross over and you can do a lot of really good work um, with just repetition and, and working your pistol, get, getting your skills there. Um, you know, honing those neural pathways so that you're faster and more accurate each time. But you're right. Everything we do um, is allows people a gateway, really. So on the local level, we have a quarterly match, which is a simple course of fire. It's three strings. 
It's very simple. It can happen at any range. Uh, it can happen um, indoor, outdoor, you know, from the bench. It's super easy. Um, and it allows ladies an introduction into competition. So a lot of people will think, oh, I could never compete. That's too serious. It's too, too much pressure. But once you understand this is just a drill, it's just a simple course of fire. You know what you're going to shoot. So you hear the beep, you shoot it, you show clear, and that's it. We log your time. So it's a really great introduction to competition because now you're realizing, oh, I'm learning range commands. I'm learning how to run a shot timer. I'm learning scoring. Um, I'm working a little bit faster. Um, but our quarterly match is a really great way because you're doing it locally with your friends in your regular range, you know, doing all the same things you normally do. It's just a simple course of fire, but it does give you a baseline and a place to start and some familiarity with the lingo and, and how a competition works. So that's something I'm really proud of that we do nationwide. Um, and it allows people to see on the leaderboard how they stack up nationwide. And we have it divided into color tracks, which is our girl in the gun way of um, kind of dividing people based on experience and skill sets. So you are competing about against in the same division with people who are similarly new or similarly experienced as you. So it does give you kind of a good baseline to see where you are. And, and every so often it's pretty fun to check in on that. So we do that quarterly. Okay. All right. So uh, I was looking through your, some of your programs and one that piqued my interest was uh, your giving back program. Want to tell people a little bit about that? Yeah, our giving back program is really just a heart mission of a way that we can make a difference in our communities. There's a lot of really great charities that our chapters participate in. Um, throughout the year, there's a lot of charitable giving. Our, our biggest one nationally would be our Back the Women in Blue program. So once a year, we invite law enforcement women to come. Uh, they come here locally to me in Austin, Texas, and we give them really incredible three days of training. Um, you know, when we started that program, I think about eight years ago, I was hesitant because I thought we're a commercial organization, we're civilians, how can we benefit these law enforcement officers? But what I realized, and the reason why we were encouraged to do it is so often they're not getting the training they need, they don't get the trigger time, right. uh, they don't have the range time, and often their range masters are there since their instructors don't speak their language. And so if there is something that I can give them that helps them be better marksmen, help them defend their life when, when seconds count, help them improve their draw stroke, improve their accuracy, all those things that can really be life-saving for them. Uh, I want them to have all the skills that they have, that they can possibly have. And so, um, so we started this program and what I found was not only did they need the training, they really needed each other. These women needed to come together and be find mentors and friends among their own community of other law enforcement women. And so it's been incredibly valuable and I'm really proud of the work that we do. So throughout the year, our members will nominate an officer in their, her local community. And then I reach out and I invite her. I reach out to her sergeant and make sure that she gets time off and that she can get here to us. And then we cover everything. All of our sponsors help pitch in. Some of our, our chapters do fundraisers and we cover their the officer's hotel and food and ammo and range fees. And we give them swag and we make sure that they have a really amazing time here with us. So that's one of our big giving back initiatives. Um, there are a couple others, of course, domestic violence hits women pretty hard. We've been shaken in our own community by women who have been victims of domestic violence. And so that's something that we do to raise awareness and give women tools and support domestic violence uh, prevention organizations. Um, close to my heart is pediatric brain cancer. Uh, my daughter is a, is a fighter in that fight. And so uh, as a league, we give, um, we give donations to the pediatric, a couple of different pediatric cancer foundations, uh, raise awareness about pediatric brain cancer. I feel that had I known early in, earlier in her journey to get an earlier diagnosis, um, maybe she would have kept her vision. So my daughter's blind. Um, and so I just want to give other mothers the tools they need to maybe make those decisions and know that they're not alone in that very scary battle. Um, that sometimes gun girls can be fierce warriors in other ways as well. And we can support each other in those ways too. So we support um, uh, pediatric brain cancer foundations, as well as the Seed Foundation, which is a, a nonprofit that helps the blind and visually impaired with self-defense options. So uh, we do, um, because my daughter is visually impaired, she's completely blind. Um, I do a lot of, of work with the um, blind community too on self-defense strategies for them. And then um, we also have a nonprofit called A Girl in the Gun Legacy. It's a 501c3 to help us 
build uh, hopefully a facility someday where the girl in the gun community can gather and, and train. Uh, so that's also, those are our giving back missions, but even, even on the local level, there's a lot of chapters doing good work with their women's shelters and uh, Reefs Across America. Many of our chapters can um, participate with that organization at Christmas time. And, and uh, there's just a lot of really great heart in our community that wants to give back and make a difference. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm, have been former law enforcement uh and you're talk, talking about the ladies and stuff you know even officers in general a lot of their department training is i don't want to say lacking but their range time is lacking uh you know they qualify once maybe twice a year and right uh it's they they don't really get the the time that they need on the range to better themselves or better their their skill that they have and I, i'm a i'm a real big proponent i've helped uh train some of the uh local officers that i've uh in my community now that i'm not in uh, law enforcement anymore i've helped some of the recruits better their shooting before they go to the academy uh once they get uh know that they've been applied or maybe they've gone and they've didn't pass the qualification for, or something. I've had a couple of uh, law enforcement heads reach out to me and say, Hey, can you work with this person to, uh, to get them up to speed and stuff? And it, I, I jump at the chance because I know that they don't get the, the time that they need to really work on their skills. And if you don't practice or don't train, you lose the skill. Uh, it, it it's like riding a bicycle. <laughs> yeah. And the officers have so many other initiatives that are important to their departments, whether it's, you know, politically motivated or whatever, there's a lot of different um, hours that they have to spend learning other initiatives, uh, communication strategies and, and others. So a lot of these women don't even get defensive tactics yeah. in the academy, much less after the academy. And so having a female defensive tactics instructors and allowing them to roll on the mats and not worry about getting hurt, but really learn technique and having that time to train on it with other women. Mm -hmm is uh, really beneficial. And then of course the firearms training and then some team building things that they do, but um, there's a lot of great tactics that they can learn from other agencies and, and other things that are working, especially gear. A lot of times many departments, particularly rural departments don't have gear and equipment that fits women. And so they can find what's working for other officers. They can take it home. They can look at their department policy and see if it's something that they can get or maybe that they can uh, purchase on their own according to their policy. So we've worked with a lot of agencies now to make sure that women get the gear that they need and, and that it's right. It's right for them. Um, it's, I mean, this is life-saving measures really uh, to give those ladies the tools and, and, and skills that they need to, to do the work out there. They're all really amazing servant leaders. And so we want to be there for them. Okay. All right. So now that we've kind of peaked, maybe people's interest uh what are some of the membership perks uh for if somebody was to join girl on a gun what are some of the membership perks that they have well you can come to any of the events that are amazing all of our events are out of this world there's no one else doing events like we do uh like our drift academy and our sniper school and all of those things are, are really specialized activities that we've honed that i'm i'm fortunate that i get to kind of have a vision and, and then it, it, see it come together. So uh, those kinds of ideas are, are pretty incredible and it gives women training opportunities outside the box. So vehicles, vehicle training that you wouldn't get at your local range or, um, you know, sniper training or, or armory or any of those things that might not be available at home. It gives, it gives you a out of your bubble, so to speak. Um, so those opportunities are really fantastic for members. Um, the other things would be every Tuesday, I send an email to all of our members with a training tip. There's usually some kind of marksmanship tip in there and um, reminders of upcoming events and some situational awareness or safety information. Um, every Tuesday, we, we send that out to all of our members. And then, um, yeah, there's so many. You get a packet in the mail, you get your membership card and your, and your name tag, you get access to our virtual library. We have thousands of videos, hours, hours of videos. So we have hundreds of videos you can watch. And some of them are, you know, 20 minutes. Some of them are three and a half hours. Some of them are full training sessions that you can watch on our video library. So depending on what skills you want to learn, uh, you know, 
what, where you are in your journey, maybe some people want to hear it a couple times or they want to watch this video before they go take a class or get some introductory knowledge or really take a next level class to even see what's available out there. We have all of that on our website. So our, our uh, video library is very extensive. It covers everything from pistol basics all the way up to um, tactics, uh, advanced marksmanship. Uh, and we have that for competition. We have different discussions. We have non-lethal. We have uh, we even have some survival. If you want to learn how to run a chainsaw, there's things we have those videos on our website. So uh, we have, we really run the gamut on knife defense and, and uh, gunsmithing. If you want to build our, we'll walk you right through it. So we have all of the videos on our website um, that really give people um, access to information. So I would say that that's probably the most valuable perk of membership. We also have a lot of really amazing um, partnerships with our sponsors. And so most of them offer discounts to our girls. Uh, different times of year, we get different discounts that we roll out to members, especially if you come participate in our events. So for example, the ladies who came to our national conference all got like 20% off staccato. Wow. Uh, they got discounts from the Glock store. They got discounts from the HK store. Um, there's, they got uh, discounts from mass industries on their PCCs and rifles. Like it, it's really, um, it's incredible how our sponsors really want to support women in their journey, give them the tools. And so, um, yeah, so we have a lot of really great discounts and perks like that too. So there's all, there's so many, I, I, I can't even think of all of them <laughs> and it's only $50 a year, which is incredible. All right. Yeah, that was the, the next question was uh, the how much was the membership to to join? And, and that's uh, through that's your uh, girl on a gun level through all your clubs and everything. The, yeah, I know some, dollars a year. You're joining uh, the national club and you can go to any chapter. Yeah. So if you are a member in Florida and you travel to Colorado, you can stop in at every chapter on the way. <laughs> so when you're a member of one, you're a member of all, which really is amazing during the summer and for our snowbirds, yeah. uh, as ladies travel around, they get to be part of multiple communities and they get to go see what other chapters are doing. Okay. Uh, every facilitator is a little bit different. Her credentials and every range facility is different in the amenities that it offers. Okay. So some uh, chapters may be able to do different things. But now that we have the A Girl and Again Marksmanship Program, which we rolled out this year, uh, it's been fun to see ladies take their books with them as they travel so that as they go to different events, uh, those facilitators can sign off on them and they can earn additional levels. Uh, and it really makes it fun to go to go visit other ladies and meet other people across the country. You know, you always have a, a welcoming community everywhere you go. Okay. All right. How many clubs uh, in general are, are uh, do you do you know uh, the number of clubs? Are they in all fifty states? Uh, no. Give us a little bit about the 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 clubs and and the the numbers if you can. We have members in all fifty states. We don't have chapters in all fifty, um, but we have chapters in most. Uh, we have um, there's over there's like two hundred and eighty chapters, something like that. Um, like I said, we're at three hundred and thirty ranges. So uh, some chapters have multiple ranges in their area, depending on if one has shotgun opportunity or, you know, one might be indoor, one might be outdoor. So we have some chapters that have multiple ranges, but for the most part, it's in the two, 300 area that we have chapters around the country. And if there's not a chapter near you, you can join our national e-chapter, which is our chapter for kind of our, our homeless girls, and they can participate virtually. We have different virtual activities. Uh, Dawn is the facilitator of that. And so she has a virtual discussions each month and training and points people to different videos or discussions. She brings in guest speakers and instructors to train. Um, and it's surprising how much one can learn virtually. Yeah. We have, we started virtual training back during COVID and it has been equally popular now. Right. So we have uh, I pretty much go on zoom at least once a week mm -hmm. and do some kind of presentation for different audiences. And um, there's, still wildly popular people can still learn a lot and also have that connection with other people um virtually so that that's something that's available to members as well okay uh if they were wanted to find uh if there was a club in their area they just what go to your website and you have a drop down where they can see the map and everything to see if there's a club in their area yeah exactly they go to a girl in the org, okay. like find a chapter at the top and you can put in the city closest to you and it'll bring up cities around you or 
Uh, you can zoom in on the map to your area and see who's closest to you. If there's not a chapter near you, just go to your local range and ask them if they're interested. If they have a female instructor on staff or if they know a female instructor in the area, have her reach out to us and we'll start her on the onboarding process. She can learn about us and see if it's a right fit for her. Okay. Yeah, that, that was the next one. If there wasn't one, how how would someone look up? And you kind of went over. Yeah, the, that's it. Just uh, send us an email. Email instructor and have a, a place to, to host the events and everything. Yeah, it's the perfect storm of three things. You have to be a female instructor. Well, you have to be a certified instructor. You have to be female. You have to be a certified instructor. Uh, and you have to have a range. So a range that's like a real range, not just someone's backyard, but a real range with safety protocols and insurance and all that kind of stuff. So we do have this compilation of, of credentials that instructors need to, to get. Uh, so, but we start there and if they're interested, then we tell them what they need to get and they have some time to achieve those, those expectations. So um, they have to take a couple different communications courses. We want to make sure that they can speak and teach. Uh, they have to take a stop the bleed hemorrhage control and arrange response course to make sure that they can manage a line and handle any situations that might arise. Uh, they have to um, be a certified instructor and a certified RSO by a number of different uh, approved academies. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have to have instructor insurance, um, among a couple other things. They have to shoot the FBI call on video so we can see it. We can see how well they can shoot. And once we see that they can walk the walk and talk the talk, we welcome them on board and we're off to the races. Okay. All right. Who would they or how would they, if there's a female instructor that's interested or a range that's interested in becoming a uh, host range, uh, who would they or how would they uh, apply or get more information? Yeah, on our website, agirlandagun.org, at the very bottom in the footer, it says start a chapter. I think it might, it might even say it at the top too. I can't remember. But it says start a chapter. And that's where they can go and learn those credentials, learn a little bit more about us, see if it's the right fit for them. They can start the process. Uh, step one, they learn a little bit about us. Step two, they tell us about them. And then step three, they, they come on board. Okay. Uh, so we, have, we make it really easy and they can get all the information they need. They'll know everything up front to see if it's the right fit. Okay. All right. Well, that was all the questions about girl and a gun I had. Anything else you want to add that we maybe didn't discuss or, or anything? I am just so grateful for you giving me the opportunity to talk about it. I know that you're in Georgia in a, in a gap where we don't yet have a facilitator and I would love to have a chapter there. So um, if anyone knows a facilitator or a potential facilitator and instructor in your area, not just yours, Brian, but across the country, I would love to make those introductions and bring a girl and again to more women. It's a really great program. We have a lot of opportunities for instructors, particularly mm -hmm. to grow their business. So uh, we really want our ranges to succeed. We want our ranges to, to be profitable. We want our instructors to be profitable. We want our, it's a really great um, relationship that can allow these everyone to, to flourish and, and for us all to work together to, like you said, pass it down to the next generation. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's great. I, I look forward to, uh, maybe trying to facilitate the, a host range since I can't fish, be an instructor. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. I, I, I hope I can help. Uh, I'll get with you after we uh, end the recording and you know, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, Well, thank you for that too, because we would not have the success we have without the men in our world that are supporting us and, and encouraging women to come to us. Oftentimes people think that we're separatists or sexist or, yeah. and it could not be further from the truth. We just know that women mentoring other women can be a very positive force for them to come into the industry, to find success, to build confidence and to stay in the industry. Yeah. Um, we want them to stay gun owners and be confident and responsible gun owners. We want them to participate in our second amendment discussions and advocacy. So um, thank you for, for encouraging that and for being a support of that. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. I, I enjoy it. Uh, like I said, the majority of uh, my students, uh, I, I do the women's only, the USCCA's program, and I get so many that will, they don't want to, take, like I said, take a, a co-ed class, but because of their fear of not looking intelligent enough or not knowing enough, feeling that they don't know enough, and we all start somewhere. You no, know, we, we don't come buy a gun and all of a sudden, Hey, I know everything there is about a gun or, you know, we, we, we it's a learning process and uh, you have to start somewhere. And 
even if you have to take a basic class to feel comfortable several times, I encourage that. You know, there's no shame in repeating a class or even you no know, going with different instructors because I, I tell people as an instructor, we all have different learning styles and teaching styles. And something that I may teach, you may may not come across to you, but you go to another instructor. And they explain it a different way. And then that light bulb goes off. And it's like, ah, that's what he was talking about. And the same for the instructor student. Uh, so I, I really encourage, you know, following up, you know, taking multiple classes, even repeating them with different instructors, just because you're always going to learn something different that, you know, didn't catch that, that previous class. So. Absolutely. And you don't know what you don't know. So right. you have to start somewhere. And then as you, hear it a few times, it'll start to make sense. Right. And there will be a lot of people there to support you. The only difference really between an all women's class and all guys class is that women tend to be a little more collaborative learners. We ask a lot more questions. And so sometimes you can learn from other people asking questions. Right. Um, we don't have any machismo or ego. So that makes it <laughs> a lot of fun. And we also cheer for each other. So when you shoot, even if you miss, well, we're cheer for you. Good job. Good try. Yeah. And it always cracks the, my, my guy friends up because he's like, you know, like I've had guys before, instructors before who are saying, you know, the girls are all cheering and the guys are like, she missed. Why are we, why are we, why are we cheering? And, yeah. and it's just a different environment. We, we laugh a lot. We have a lot of fun and it's, it's a serious topic, um, mm -hmm. but to, to bring joy into it and to bring that friendship and camaraderie and that uh, attitude to it, just, I mean, there's nothing better. Right. Okay. All right. Well, final question. Uh, I'm asking this for all my guests this year, and I got this from Rob Beckman whenever I was on his and his podcast and have listened. Um, asking one question, and this year's question or this season's question was, "What do you do to relax or de-stress from the daily demands of life?" <laughs> well, lately I've been binging Netflix. It's been really <laughs> ridiculous, but that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, I leave the office pretty late at night and I just kind of go home and my dog and my kids kind of pile on and I've been watching silly Netflix series. That's kind of what I've been doing. Not, uh, not super intelligent, but it definitely helps me just think about nothing for a while. Yeah. And, and that's, that's part of the reason I asked this question because, uh, we all do something that's different. Uh, we all have our, our go-to, uh, not everybody, you no, know, being gun owners, no, Sometimes the question is, you ask that, oh, I go to the range to de-stress. That's not, you no, know, sometimes that's a stressor for people. <laughs> um, but you know, some people like reading, some like listening to music, some like jogging, biking, you no, know, a whole number of things. And I wanted to bring this question to out to help people find what they can do or what they enjoy to relax and to de-stress from the daily routine. Yeah. Like I wish that so I did heavy. something that was, I wish I did something that was more positive, like gardening or, <laughs> or jogging or something that was like healthy, <laughs> but no, <Yeah. laughs> no, I consider all of that part of my job, you know, to, to be strong and to go to the gym and to dry fire and to go to the range and mm -hmm. like, that's all work for me, but it's something I'm very proud of. And I, I work hard at it, but it is all of those things are, are work. So I, I wish I had more, um, and even reading, uh, yeah. most of I read are gun related, instructor related, mindset related. Uh, so we have a girl in gun book club. So usually I'm reading books, either getting ahead or getting caught up on the book of the month. So, uh, yeah, I wish that I had more productive <laughs> relaxation. Yeah. No. It's it's like uh, I had a uh, Beth Alcazar on and uh, she had meant I asked this question and she said, uh, surprisingly, uh, that um uh, i asked it because she laughed and she said i'm not laughing at you or the question but you no know, the timing she said one of her girlfriends had gotten her a massager she, you know she has some migraines and it goes over uh massages the eye area plays mm -hmm. has bluetooth that plays music and she said that's that's her go-to uh for de-stressing and stuff and no uh, i it, it's just uh everybody's different and i, I encourage people to find something to take some of the stress away from your daily routine, because if you don't, it's going to pile up and it's going to affect your health, both mentally and physically. So. Agreed. So, all right, Robin. Well, if uh, anybody wanted to find out more about you or gun and a girl in a gun, uh, how would they 
where would they go? How would they contact you? Well, I'd love it if everyone would just go like our Facebook page and our Instagram page. We're trying to build up those numbers a little bit. Um, but you can find me at anything at Girl on a Gun. Our, our website is a girl on a gun dot org. Our Facebook is AG8. No, our Facebook is a girl on a gun club. Okay. And uh, X and Instagram are AGAG club. Okay. So they don't match, but you can hopefully find us. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm at, all of those roads lead to me. So you can find me. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate your time today and uh, I look forward to working with you. And uh, hopefully we can have you back on uh, as you grow and add numbers to the organization and you know, report on some of the good things and the growth and all that. So I appreciate your time today, Robin. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Uh-huh.